Hello, my name is Jane Riach. In 1979, approximately 120 women were recruited for the nuclear power field. I was sworn in on May 30th, 1979. It was explained to me at that time that upon successful completion of the nuclear power training program, we women would stand engineering watches on the fast attack submarines in port to augment ship's force. This would allow the men to spend more time with their families. We were all excited to perform that mission. Bob wrote me, that would have been totally cool to have a standby crew in port to stand watch and conduct maintenance on the boat. I would have been able to spend more time with my family. 86 hour work weeks in port were tough 1979 through 1987. I was the first female section leader of Section 2 of Class 8002 at Nuclear Power School. We graduated June 13, 1980. After graduation, we, re we reported to the Nuclear Power Training Unit in Boston Spa, New York for hands-on operation of a nuclear power plant. On December 23, 1980, as a machinist made Petty Officer Second Class and E5, I became a qualified nuclear plant operator on the S3G prototype. On April 4th, 1981, I qualified as an Engineering Laboratory Technician, or ELT for short. My first duty station was the Radiological Controls Division in the Repair Department at Submarine Base Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. It was a three-year tour from May 1981 through May 1984. In 1982, I became a qualified radiological control shift supervisor. I was responsible for writing repair procedures and supervising repair work in radiation and high radiation areas in many submarine reactor compartments. It had been decided in 1980 that women would not stand engineering watches on any submarine in port. There was a questionable reason for this. The scuttlebutt went around that many chiefs of the boat would not go to sea if any woman stood watch on their boat. This irritated me. Each submarine's commanding officer could have given them a direct order to stand their watch and go to sea. So much for the chain of command unless this, this decision came from a higher authority. In June 1984, as a machinist mate first class in E6, I reported for duty to requalify at the S3G prototype at the Nuclear Power Training Unit in New York. Requalification was required every three years. I became an instructor and a qualification board member. I was honorably discharged on April 30th, 1986, after seven years in the Navy. As far as I know, by the end of 1987, all remaining women nukes were cross-rated out of the nuclear power field, not to return until 1994. Doris Shire Minor, another female nuke of Class 8003, writes, I enlisted in the United States Navy in March 1979. In late 1979, I attended Interior Communications Technical School in San Diego, California. I began nuclear power school in January 1980 and qualified as an operator at the Nuclear Power Training Unit in Boston Spa, New York in 1981. I then reported to duty at the submarine base in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii and qualified as a radiological shift supervisor working on fast attack submarines and performing other duties. In March 1984, I reported back to the Nuclear Power Training Unit in New York for requalification on the D1G prototype and qualified for staff duty as an instructor. I was honorably discharged in November 1986 as an electronics mate first class. Another female nuke, Jan Little writes, if my memory serves me correctly, I was in class 8005 in nuclear power school and nuclear power training unit in New York. After training, I reported to the Naval Submarine Base Bangor, Washington to welcome the first Trident submarines. I worked at the Trident refit facility, finishing my six-year contract there 
as an electronics technician first class. In our era, I think I was only a handful of African-American women to complete the nuclear power program. 